is Kathleen Kennedy, and I am a board member of the Children's Dyslexia Center of Chicago. I am also a graduate of the center. Um, as most of you know, October is Dyslexia Awareness Month, and I wish uh, every month was Dyslexia Awareness Month, just because I want to get awareness out there. What is dyslexia? Share my story. Um, everyday struggles that people are facing and how they're overcoming it and what our community and educators need to know, what they can know to help a child in a classroom or even adults and how we can help someone who may not even know that they are dyslexic. Um, tonight, I have a very special guest joining me to talk about his struggles, his what he faced growing up being dyslexic, um, the life-changing events that played a role of overcoming his disabilities and what he's doing today to not only help children in Chicago, but all over the nation. Um, I welcome former Chicago Blackhawk and 2010 Stanley Cup champion, but most importantly, one of the biggest advocates of children's dyslexia, Brent Sopel. Brent, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Well, thanks for uh, finding time to talk to me. Definitely. So why don't you go ahead and share your story and how you became a huge advocate for dyslexia? Yeah, you know what? Um, you know, I struggled in school for, for my whole life. And I, it was three, I was three, three years old when I got my younger, one of my daughters tested. And she was in grade two at that point in time. And that's when we kind of connected the dots uh, about uh, she has dyslexia, dysgraphia, and ADHD. And you know, where did she get that from? You know, me. And so really that was the first time being 33 years old, really the first time I've ever heard the words dyslexia. Um, you know, went back to there, uh, the neuropsych and those answers, that was me, that was me, and that was me. So that was, you know, that was a, a turning point to uh, where we are today. You know, I, I took that understanding what dyslexia is and, you know, go and turn my focus on what can I do for her? How do I get the help that she needs to, uh, you know, to be successful? And she's now a freshman in college and, you know, doing well. Um, as any parent or any dyslexic knows, she does have scars, but definitely nowhere near the scars that I have, um, you know, taken 33 years of my life before I found out what it was. So you, uh, growing up, your struggles, you didn't know that you were dyslexic until later on in life. So, um, just if you share some of this like struggles you went with in school whether it be bullying or test taking or writing just to relate to some of the kids that may be listening to sh yeah. share that could kind of relate a little bit and how you dealt with that yeah you know like i said i i hated going to school um the early you know if you have that in a dyslexia you know what it, it's a great thing you know it's just like any doctor the earlier you find out you have cancer or you have heart disease you know the better it is and I wouldn't have the scars that I have today if I would have known. You know, I was reading at a grade four level in high school, you know, and uh, that's all, uh, that's not very good when you're, you know, reading at a fourth, fourth grade level in high school. Um, you know, I was always a bigger kid, you know, stronger kid just because of, because of hockey. And did I become a bully? Yeah, 100%. And where did I struggle? You know, I struggled in everything because I had no self-esteem. I, you know, I, I never knew what it was. I just thought I was dumb, stupid, and lazy is the three term words that we all hear as dyslexics um, going to school. I just work harder, you know, come on, work harder. You can do it now. You're just being lazy. Now you're just stupid, you know, which those are all completely wrong. But I didn't know that. I had no uh, answer to bounce back at them because that's what I was. And that's what I thought it was until I was 33 years old. So I hated every second waking up going to school. Everything but gym class, you know, was what I was like. And then I think it was in high school, you started to have to write tests for gym class. I'm like, this sucks now. You know, I hated that too. And essentially, that's why I played, you know, in NHL. That's why I played hockey as long as I did, uh, is because that was my only safe place uh, in the world is being on the hockey rink. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I could share some of those struggles with you growing up. I mean, I, definitely got diagnosed when I was in second grade, but same feeling. You you know you're different. You feel like you're dumb. You're comparing yourself. I mean, I have two very intelligent brothers who get straight A's all the time, and I just was not grasping it. And of course, you get the name calling and all that good stuff. So yeah. who, who do your parents had dyslexia, your mom or your dad? 
That what that that's a really good question. So when I got first diagnosed, they're like, you know, this is genetic. Um, right. And at the time, they didn't know what dyslexia was. They were learning, yep. and we still cannot figure out what side it came from, whether my dad's side or my mom's side, because I was the first one to get diagnosed in the family. So, so it can skip a generation, mm -hmm. which it sounds like it it did for you and. You know, to elaborate on that a little bit, you know, for parents that may be listening, you know, if you don't have it, you really don't understand what we go through. So if your kids are staring at you like, hey, you know, you have no clue where you're, you're talking. Unfortunately, they, they, they know you, you love them and you're there to support them, but they really know that they, that you don't understand what they're going through. So um, Try and be extra sympathetic. I always say, you tell a dyslexic, you know, a normal person, you did a great job. A dyslexic, you did a great, 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 great job. And then it sounds funny. I always tell people in sales, you know, you get told no, you go down one feet. You, told, you tell a dyslexic, you no, know, it goes down 10 feet. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, like, I was so fortunate to have parents to, like, teach me that my dyslexia wasn't, like, it's a disability, but it's not going to hinder me. Like I need to use that as my superpower and develop its strengths through it. So hopefully, I mean, if I pass it on to my children, I have the tools that I can share and be positive and they have great role models like you to look up to. So, um, I, you know, I always say learning you know, dyslexia is a learning difference, not a learning disorder, but I still call it a learning disorder because the world's not educated enough right now. So, um, you know, the wrong the problem with the education system is they want to learn us in one little box, but unfortunately that's not, that's not reality. We all learn differently. So every dyslexic, it's okay. You know, I've got strengths, Kathleen, you got strengths, you know, some people got strengths and weaknesses. That's, that's just reality. So it's all good to be dyslexic. And I always like to say that I'm one of 20% of the population that uh, gets to see the world this way. That's a, at the end of the day, that's a pretty special thing that, uh, you know, a small percentage of the world actually understand that uh, the way we think and the way we operate, that's, that is a special thing. Was there a, a, like a profound moment when you were older, when you found out that you were dyslexic, that how, like, how did you find out what, what is that story? Like, did you find out after your daughter got diagnosed because you were sharing some of the same struggles that she had growing up? That, well, at, right at that t point in time, it, like all her answers were my answers uh, to the question, you know. So basically, as she as she were going through the answers of tests, I was like, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. So that's kind of, that was the uh, kind of the can that opened the worm right there of uh, starting to put two and two together. And um, again, I was still playing hockey. Um, I was still focused on that. I was focused on her. I never really focused uh, my dis myself or my dyslexia anywhere until uh, after hockey, until uh, actually I went to rehab. I had to get sober, and I had to learn how to be okay with how God made me, and that's dyslexic. And, uh, you know, uh, here I am today. I'm okay with it, and um, I can talk about my struggles and my, uh, you know, my strengths in, in different ways. Mm, before, I couldn't do that. Yeah, and I think I – I agree with you in some like aspects, like a hundred percent, because even growing up, I was so open. Like that's what my parents taught, like as a positivity, like, oh yeah, I'm dyslexic. Like I would tell everybody and other people are like, are you sure you want to share with that? Are you sure you like want to tell your employer that? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I said, I'm not ashamed that I'm dyslexic because I have all these strengths. So I guess my next question for you is what would you tell people in the workplace that have a coworker who's dyslexic, what would you tell educators like for kids in the classroom? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's the biggest fight. I, I, I fight with, uh, you know, with parents today, with school boards, with, uh, uh, principals, deans, they're, you know, teachers are there to teach, not to diagnose. So majority of them don't know what dyslexia is. And the biggest fight I have is that, you know, school districts and school boards, they're not dyslexic, so they have no idea what, what is going on, how we need to learn, but they're trying to tell us how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, be open and, and be okay with who you are. You know, it's, um, that's why I do what I do. You know, I released my documentary a couple months ago, you know, here to change the world, because that's what I'm truly trying to do. And 
the more more people that are open about it, um, the more the word gets out there. You know, I still think less than 20% of the population knows exactly what dyslexia is. So the documentary is here to change the world, but I'm trying to educate the world before I can change it. So the more help that I get from, from everybody being open with it, it's okay. Just, you know, just like, you know, some kids have autism. Some people uh, have learning, dis- you know, learning disorders of, of different kinds, you know, a reading comprehension or, or whatever it is. I always say that 80% of us have something There's 20% doesn't. It's okay. Be okay with who that is. And if that's being dyslexic, yeah, my son's dyslexic or my daughter's dyslexic or whatever that place may be open, be free, be proud of it, you know, love who you are. Exactly. Because if we were all the same, the world would be a pretty boring place. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, so you said you like you turned to hockey, like that was your escape. Um, I guess do you want to share a little bit more of that. Like did, did some of the guys on the team or did anyone know that you were struggling? Did you turn to them or anything at that nature? No, not really. Again, the hard part is, uh, you know, I was almost at the end of my career when I found out that I'm dyslexic. So, um, and I didn't say anything because it, it really didn't mean anything to me. It was more important that I get my daughter to help and, and make sure she's taken care of. Again, it, it meant something to me when I left the game of hockey, when I had to enter the real world and try and find a job. And that's through that we're going to rehab and having to get sober. And that's where all that comes into play. So um, most of the hockey world had no idea that I'm dyslexic until I re- released the documentary and some of the, uh, you know, some of the videos and some of the articles that, that I've, you know, that I've done and released. And again, it's, you know, hockey's, uh, you know, the four major sports I'll just talk about, um, you know, it's macho. It's they're not talking about your weakness and uh, the mental health side of, of the four major sports, uh, Major League Baseball, uh, NBA, uh, NFL, and NHL do a horrendous job with mental health because they don't care about the players. Um, they care about the money that they're making. So um, back to your point, no, none of them, nobody, nobody's like cared because again, also a lot of them don't understand what the word dyslexia even means. So if I'm playing a macho sport where they don't know what dyslexia means, so guess what? We don't talk about it. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So I get like going back to your daughter, getting diagnosed and getting her the help she needs, I guess, advice that you have for parents. She said she's in college now. I can share my own college experience. I knew it was important. I got, I have the IEP. I have it all written up. I made sure I picked a college that can help me, whether it had books on tape, um, testing centers. Was that important when she chose a college? You know, the, the tough part is that, uh, you know, excuse me, 18 year old girl. She, she, uh, has a mind of her own who, who's gone, um, her, you know, her whole school life being that kid, you know? So yes, you know, it's, um, obviously, uh, books on tape. Uh, there's a good, you know, I think it's allied where you can get all those books mm-hmm. on tape. She uses that. She uses her IEP. She advocates for herself. So, um, what I wanted for her to go to school, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a dyslexic. I see things a lot differently than, than she does. So she picked a school um, that she wanted, but she's also advocated for herself for, for a number of years and uses the IEP and uh, uses the resources that she has to, to help her. So um, I wanted her to pick, pick a little something different, but that's okay because at least I know she knows how to advocate for herself because she did that all through high school and, and did a great job of it. Yeah, that's important. Advocacy is key. I, I love seeing young kids just be advocates of, for themselves and go up to the teacher and tell them, hey, I need help or hey, I'm dyslexic. I was in college and first week I told all my professors I had a meeting with them and yeah. one of them was like, hey, I'm dyslexic too. Let's work through this. So it was a great thing. So And, and you know, as parents, you just watch, you know, some kids aren't open enough yet to, to to be able to do that so then that might be a little bit of a different path you have to go you know go down but she's you know she's very outspoken she advocates for herself she has been for a number of years so I was I was okay with uh, allowing her to kind of carve her own path you know that way but as a parent you just have to know your kid um, if if you're you know a son or daughter is not going to advocate for her you know for themselves again you know maybe you have to step in a little bit more and uh, steer them another way. Um, just to, I always say, you got to protect them from themselves. 
Definitely. So I know that you are talking about your foundation earlier, the Brent Sofel Foundation. So in your documentary, which is awesome. I loved it. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that and how the foundation got started and where it's at today? Yeah, you know, uh, I started the Brent Sopel Foundation, uh, the website brentsopelfoundation.org, just launched a new website uh, as of Friday. Um, you know, it started three years ago just, just for my struggles. And um, again, I found out 10 years ago, but I had to be okay with who I, who, you know, who I was and, you know, doing the research and talking to people and finding out exactly how many have it and, you know, what the statistics are on every level. And, you know, I just said, you know, it's time to time to make a difference and time to change the world. And I've been saying I'm going to change the world for, for a number of years. And people always give me the, what? what you, you know, kind of give me the dog look. And yeah, that's why I'm here. And that's why, you know, called the documentary here to change the world is that's what truly, you know, I want to do. Uh, spend a lot of time up in Capitol Hill uh, in Washington speaking to, um, House of Representatives and Senators and, and and things like that. I want to change legislation. I want to change the world for each and every kid out there uh, so they never feel the way I do every day. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully we can both change the world together. <laughs> um, and I love, love talking to you, love your documentary. Um, I know just sharing your experience, especially you and your daughter, um, hopefully will help a parent or two or even a kid who's watching who is a huge hockey fan. I know I was a huge hockey fan growing up and still am and finding out that um, uh, one of my favorite teams players is dyslexic. I kind of, it, you know, it started a spark there and it inspired me as well. So thank you. <laughs> um, you know, it's um, to all parents, all kids watching this. You know, the one thing I got to say is you're not alone. That's it. You know, you're not, you're not in this fight alone. I have it too. This is an everyday fight for me. So you're, you're not fighting an alone battle. Um, you always think you are no matter what, you know, whatever battle you're in, but you're not alone. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brent. I really appreciate you taking the time to answer some questions and being with us tonight. And it, it, it was, it's been great. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you.